Hey howdy boys and girls. It's a gray day in our fair city today. So uh, I started rooting around in my backpack finding things that I'm gonna need to take uh, on this uh, 400 kilometer hike uh, starting May 26. And I dug out my old camp kitchen and made a startling discovery. I looked, this is my, um, what do you call it, a burner, alcohol stove burner. Now, I made this one a number of years ago. It's looking mighty rough, eh, see? It's still completely 100% functional, but I just don't like the look of it. So I think today, just for <clears throat> S and G's, we're going to make a new one, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Ain't nothing to it. Everything is... Everything that's in here was free, so it's all stuff salvaged from the recycled bins. We're going to start with two of these cans. These uh, had uh, tuna in them. Let's see, I can't quite make out the name. I don't have my glasses. Spicy Thai Tuna. Clover leaf. So I've got two cans. You'll notice the profile is different from this and this. So we're going to turn this into this. So what I did was I made a couple of X's. I'm going to cut these cans in half. I'm going to throw away the part that has the X. And then we're going to mush the two together. It's going to be really fun, delightfully simple. You're going to love it. All right, stay tuned. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I should point out that certain tools are needed. Uh, I happen to have a pair of these handy-dandy Tim Snips, and I believe they're a right-hand curve. Eh, I'm not sure. Uh, but real good. Jolly things to have on hand. Mind your fingers. Going to need a pair of Tim Snip... Uh, sorry. <laughs> Needle-nose pliers. Mm hmm. And we're going to need one of these things. This is a, a carpenter's knife. And uh, let's see how this one works first, because that's the one we're going to get with right away. So uh, one of these cans, here, this one. We're going to discard the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two cuts in the bottom of this can, and that will allow me to use the tin snips to cut the, uh, cut the thing apart. So it goes something like this. All right, two cuts. Now I'm just going to bend that down. And having done that, I can then insert the tin snips in there and start making the cuts. I'm going to do two cuts. I'm going to rough it out first, and then I'm going to come back and cut precisely along this line. I want to uh, make you endure that, so uh, I'll come back as soon as I've got that done. Okay. So here you can see, this is going to be the top part of my can. This obviously is going to be the bottom part. I'm going to do the second cut here, get a nice precision cut, and then I'll do the same with this other half, cutting along this line to get a nice precision cut. Again, we'll come back as soon as that's done. It's pretty boring to watch. Okay, <clears throat> here we are. We have our two pieces. This is the top. It's going to fit inside the bottom. Oh, but look, they're like the same size. How in the heck are we going to do that? You're probably wondering, but I'm going to show you. <coughs> we're done with the tin snips, so we're going to use these little pliers now, needle nose pliers, and we're going to make, uh, we're going to crimp this, this edge. I'm going to reach up. You can see how far I'm reaching up. That's maybe, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so. And I'm just going to give it a little twist like that. That's the crimp. And bit by bit, as we move around, we'll shorten the uh, diameter so that it fits inside the bottom. You get the general idea. I'm going to go ahead and finish that, and uh, then we'll see how we put this whole thing together. <clears throat> okay. So I've crimped this enough to get the two halves to start to fit together. Okay. You can see what that looks like. All right. 
Then I cannibalized the old stove, and inside it's just uh, Corning's fiberglass, household fiberglass insulation. And then this piece of stainless steel, which I m cut from an old uh, strainer, kitchen strainer. And that just goes on top there. Now I'm going to mush these together, and we'll see how she looks. Hang on just a moment. Okay, so the two halves, I've got it started. The mesh is in, the insulation is in. And then we just take a block of wood or a book or something. And smash that sucker down. Presto. There's your new stove. Nothing to it. Now yeah, a little fine tuning there, we'll fix that up. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Free, baby. Yeah. Everything was scavenged. Didn't buy anything. Uh, what do you say we uh, test this out, see if it works? Yeah. Hang on. All right. Now, this setup may look crazy, and there's a gazillion ways you could do it. Uh, your own thing. This is what I do because I like the uh, ability of using an alcohol stove and this pot also uh, doubles as a, you know, a fire uh, stove. So if for whatever reason I run out of alcohol, this by the way is uh, two tablespoons of your basic fondue fuel. Uh, I get this at the dollar store. This didn't come from the dollar store. No, this came from the grocery store. Actually, this costs two dollars. Forgive me. But anyway, it's cheap uh, and it's already blue in color, so you're never going to mistake it for something else. So that just sits right down inside of this here IKEA uh, silverware strainer thingy. And I'm just going to spark it with the old Phariseum. And away she goes. She's lit. I know from experience that I will boil two cups of water, which I have in this stainless steel can. Uh, in six minutes. We're not going to sit here and watch this for six minutes, but I will come back in six minutes and you'll see. Oh, I should put the lid on that too, eh? Just to be... There we go. So, see you in a few. Six minutes. So, I believe we're coming up to the six minute mark. And that there is what they call a rolling boil. I don't know how much longer that'll burn, but it gets the job done. That's it. Any questions? So at this point, <clears throat> what I do is I just lift the pot by the bale out of uh, the burner here and put it into this cozy. Now I can handle it without burning me fingers. Okay, pretty sweet. So a few notes on why this is such a cool little burner. One, it's made with recycled materials. Two, because of the fiberglass insulation inside, when you pour your fuel in, like you saw me do with this thing, uh, the fiberglass absorbs the fuel. So if you have an accent, let's say, and tip this, nothing pours out. It stays inside. And that's brilliant. Because I don't know how many times with other alcohol stoves, I've knocked the damn thing over. Like the... Uh, what is it called? The, the, the cat stove. I mean, there's, not, there's nothing to prevent that from spilling, and I've had disasters with that. <clears throat> also, because it's insulated, there's no prime time for this. You light it, and away she goes. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, you know, I know there's a bit of pride talk in here, but it really does work, and I think when you find something that works, you go with it. So this works for me. It's not going to work for everyone, 
I'm sure there will be lots of criticisms on this, and that's fine. Everybody has their own opinion, and I respect those opinions. But this is a pretty groovy little rig for what you pay for it. <laughs> there we go. So uh, I'm going to pack everything up. You'll see how it all fits together. Just a second. I've got I to gotta take a call. So let's look at how everything packs together, because I'm a big freak about things packing together. That's one of my things. <laughs> so, there's my pot. I'm going to yank that off and just set it aside. Down inside here, we have our burner. That fits inside of this little coffee cup. Oh, wait a second. Hang on. You can never pack too much tin foil. It doesn't weigh anything, and it packs away so easy. I recommend lots of it. The heavy-duty kind, though, not that chintzy stuff. A little lighter, because you always need a lighter. And inside my uh, fire pot, I have pot stands. And you'll notice with the holes, I can adjust the pot stands for whether I'm using the burner or wood. Mm, nice. And this is the little measuring cup that I have for the fuel. I don't need the lid, but... What the heck? It's on there, just in case, whatever. There's the cup, sealed. Eh? A little nod to GSI. Thanks, guys. I did buy this. This cup was $5, if you can believe it. Jesus. This pot, actually, is not a pot. It's a measuring cup I got at one of the, not dollar store. It cost me $7. But it's stainless steel, and it's graduated. Eh? Very nice. So I just put the little bale on that, <clears throat> and the lid for the pot I just made out of some tin flashing I had laying around. Uh, more tin foil. Like I said, it's it's crazy not to have it, and this is really heavy tin foil. But that just sits down there inside the cozy, the cozy which is made of uh, Reflectix. Uh, you can get that at any hardware store. <clears throat> that just sits down side like so. Then the pot. You know, I'm going to be... I'm not going to be camping in the woods on this 400 kilometer challenge. I'm going to be at the side of the road. But I love a campfire, so this lets me have a little fire I can sit next to and just look at the flames. You know, nothing beats that. So that just goes over the top. <clears throat> Oopsie. Look at that. That's it. Thanks for watching, gang. Cheers.